Now the deer will never get our sunflowers. That's right. Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back. We're back in the garden again. So, gonna take you around, show you a few of the gardens again. Gotta tie up these tomatoes um, down here because they've really, really grown. Everything down here looks so much better. So uh, this is the corn that I replanted. I'm pretty sure in an earlier video, she showed you this corn and it was pitiful. The grass took it early on. Um, it turned wet and so we couldn't get in it to work it. And uh, the grass took it early on. Well, it ended up tasseling out about this high. And that's a pretty much a surefire sign that you're not gonna get no corn. Um, so I tilled it under and planted the new corn back in the exact same row so hopefully i could benefit from the fertilizer and stuff i had already put in this bottom um this particular field here has got to have a lot of work done to it we're going to have to do some major curve of cropping and all that stuff to get it well, back to tell them it was back of fields yeah for this years was all years. tobacco land yeah. every bit of this was tobacco land over and over and over year after year until the past i don't know seven or eight years it's just been kind of planted here and there and Really hadn't had a whole lot done with it. But um, if you're wondering, this is all my daddy's place. And so this is the first time I've ever actually got to plant this for like me personally. I've worked in it with him, but so I'm learning it myself. And I've learned that this land here is not near as rich, I guess you would say, as our land up at our house because we've worked on them fields and worked on our gardens and built up the soil, you know, and stuff. And I don't know, I kind of feel like I live for that sometimes. It's like I, I study it, but, uh, but still I've got this other corn patch up here. Now this one is looking good. I'm, I'm pleased. It's, a, it's an even height all the way across. It's got a dark green color to it. And I know we're supposed to be getting some more rain and I come down here prepared to throw some more fertilizer by this. And I'm tempted to, because I would rather go ahead and fertilize it again than lose it. It's been th this particular corn up here at the top. This is honey select. And this up here is candy corn. And I planted them at two different times. So this is older and I, so they wouldn't cross pollinate. And uh, this is actually a row, two rows of sweet potatoes here. Even they look happier. <laughs> yeah, they look a whole lot better. But um, this corn here, I was getting really worried about, but this corn has had no rain. Very Since far it, end out there, the corn actually looks really good. About the last 15 foot of this field, um, but if she'll show closer here, you can see the, the, the yellow lines that's in this corn. And I looked it up on, last night and that's a sulfur deficiency. At least that's what I found. And, uh, there's sulfur in this fertilizer we're using. However, this, this corn has had a lot, had a, a, enough fertilizer by it that it should be fine. And if anybody has any recommendations on sulfur deficiencies that is maybe a cheaper way or organic way to add it to the soil let us or know or even some type of cover crop we can plant and then work into the soil i know i'm probably well all these fields this winter i'm probably well this fall i'm gonna sow and rye most of them not all of them but most of them i'm gonna sow and rye because that's like a cheaper type cover crop and you get a whole lot of material off of that rye to till back here or bad land. down here and so any type of nitrogen fixer I fit, plant, most likely the deer are just gonna destroy it. And so it'll never actually do anything anyways. Um, matter of fact, I see right over here. This is what the deer are doing to my corn. And I've, I've kept this spray, but it's been about a week since we sprayed. Uh, well, they did bite the top off of it? Yeah, they just bite the top off of it. I don't even see a deer track here, so they had to have done this before the rain. Um, but the deer are awful. They drive me crazy. Everybody gets excited when they see deer on their place. They're like, oh boy, we got deer to hunt and kill or whatever. I wish I didn't have a deer. I wish we didn't have a deer nowhere around here. I am so sick of deer because they make it impossible to grow anything. And we have, we have a ton of deer hunters around here, and they don't, it don't make a dent no, in the deer population. And we have much. coyotes, we have everything, and they just... It doesn't matter. eat deer meat all the time, and when I was little, I kind of just got burnt out on it. I mean, we eat it so much that I could care less if I've never seen another deer. I'm sick of deer. I don't know if any of y'all feel that way or not. I was watching a YouTube video last night, and the guy's got a cornfield planted, 
and and deer were standing in the middle of this cornfield and he was excited about it because he said well we, we got deer here to hunt now and i'm like we don't even have to hunt down here all we've got to do is ride to the garden or just ride down here and, and if you've got a gun with you you're gonna be able to kill a deer that's just how easy it is because we have so many deer here um so i i could rant all day about deer we're not even gonna go there but anyways so there's also one other thing that i wanted to show on these sweet potatoes now sweet potatoes are a crop that require very minimum fertilizer like most of the time we never even fertilized our sweet potatoes at home at all and look at this they're showing kind of the same things where you got the green veins and the yellow in between them i mean they're growing they're they're looking pretty good other than having that uh discoloration there um so i don't know if this will get better since we finally got some rain because these again these were the sweet potato slips we planted that we grew they've had no rain at all since they were planted it's been here a good month at least and it's been hot so i'm hoping this kind of clears up once you know they get time to benefit from this water we've had I don't know. We'll it's see. going to be a challenge down here, to be honest with you, because of the deer. And then I actually had our potato patches right over here. And about two years ago, I planted a couple rows of corn over there. And we got maybe 10 dozen ears off of it, what should have been at least. It was this whole, it was this it whole was this place, y'all. Cor that whole corner over there. Yeah. I mean, we should have got a bunch. But not the deer didn't eat it up, the freaking coons eat it. Gotta fight Mother Nature all the time. It's weather, it's animals, it's insects, it's something all the time. The insects, I don't know why, but have been terrible this year. I've never, ever had a problem hardly with any insects at all, and they've just been terrible this year. So for now, the spray repellent is working. But I will tell you this, later in the season, I have noticed that that spray repellent it's like it fade. It's like the deer. I guess they get used to it or something. I don't know, and it don't work near as good. And one other thing we tried out this year for the deer was bone sauce. We got some bone sauce from Billy at Perma Pasture Farm, and Megan will walk over here and show them that real quick. And then we got to get to work. I hear it thundering over there. And this is our buckwheat. Look how pretty it is. All them pretty little white flowers. And look at our tomatoes. Yep, so these are the tomatoes, the tomatoes that we put the hay down around. And you can see it down through there. There's not a single weed coming up in between this. Now let me show you something. This was tore up. The same, this, these tomatoes were plowed and then we put the, uh, we plowed through them with the tractor and then we put the hay down. This was done at the same time. So if we had not put this hay down, it would look like that in between those tomatoes and i that y'all i'm sold on this this may have been a lot of work to start with but golly at the work it's safe you see we got the wooden stakes here to tie these tomatoes up it's not sunk in so that i can't even tell which one we put it on but every third one i wiped in bone sauce so this one's got it on it you can see where it's sort of darker colored here I can't tell you exactly what bone sauce is. I know it's made out of something about cooking bones down. And honestly, I have no idea, so I'm not even going to go there. But we have figured out that your bone sauce has got to be placed pretty much immediately in with your plants. We had the big idea thinking that we were going to place it around this field and that was going to keep them out of this field. Well, that didn't work. But we have noticed we placed some in the deer trails that were coming out of the creek right here. And the deer do not come out any of these trails now. They're actually coming out way down there in the far corner. Um, We're so going to stick us one down there too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we need to stick one down there, but we just hadn't done it yet. But uh, I found that pretty interesting. We put it on these, uh, on the tomato steaks. Like I said, put it on every third one. And it's just like you paint it on. You paint it on with a paintbrush. And knock on wood. She's getting ready to get a good look at them because she's going to be the one doing the tying up while I throw some fertilizer out. But 
we haven't seen anything yet, so I think it's working. I wish, though, that we could somehow or another do the whole field that way, but we hadn't figured that one out yet. I just pour some fertilizer straight into a five-gallon bucket. I probably should have a glove on doing this, but I'm not going to lie. I've done it this way since I was a kid, and I don't think it's hurt me yet. I don't know. But uh, there's kind of a little bit of a motion in the wrist when you throw this fertilizer down by your plant. And you just, just let it scatter. And uh, you don't exactly want to get it on the plant. Because I'll kind of, I'll watch as I sling it and make sure no, none of the pellets land right there in the center. Because you will burn the top up in it when you do that. But, uh, yep, I just take this bucket and go down each row. I'd love to know how many acres of the baca I've top dressed this way. But I think I've gotten a little bit out of shape because of like this year doing what corn we've had. It'll wear on you toting this bucket like this. But here, we'll get this done. Hopefully we'll get us a shower of rain on it this season. And we always use this uh, liquid fence I mix it up in this spray. You probably always see this spray riding on the back of this Kubota. Well, that's what's in it. It's the deer repellent. And it does, it is rainproof, but I don't like taking chances. So if we have rain, I go back and I spray it on there because we've worked too hard to just let the deer eat it up. Um, now our garden down here across the creek, we actually have a fence around. And we will be putting a fence around the big garden where we got to strain the tomatoes up. But right now, I'm still getting in there and cultivating with the tractor, and I don't want to put a fence up just yet, so we'll continue to use this until the fence. So we're on day two of here um, at the garden. So yesterday, my phone died um, while we were trying to make a video, and also uh, it started pouring down rain. So we actually didn't get to spray the deer repellent, got the tomatoes strung up, and fertilizer put out. But... Um, I'm going to let Andy tell you a little bit about this deer repellent and what we've learned over the years um, that we've used it. But you don't want to spray this stuff when it's going to get washed off by rain like I mean, It needs to dry on the leaf. And uh, once, <laughs> once it dries on the leaf, it's actually rainproof for a few days. I mean, I don't trust it to go like if you have like a monsoon or something. I don't trust it after that. I usually go and spray like she was saying, stuff we've learned over the years. I've had a lot of people ask me how we keep deer out of our garden. And when I tell them we use this deer repellent, the liquid fence, they all laugh it off like, that stuff don't work, you know. Well, the thing is, you gotta stay on top of it. You can't go out here and spray it one time and forget it. That It really won't work then. Um, you really gotta stay on top of it. I've learned that if you go about a week or so without rain, Two weeks is about the longest time longest time period I've ever been and not sprayed. Um, and that's pushing it. But I put it on with a backpack sprayer. For as much as we do, one of the little handheld sprayers is just, it's just too cumbersome. So I bought this backpack sprayer especially for putting stuff on the garden. That's the only thing that goes in there. That's the only thing that goes in there. And uh, I don't even go by the directions of how you mix it. I take and I just pour it, I'll pour it in there until I feel it's about right and I go with it. Um, it's all organic. It's nothing that's going to hurt your plants. At least it hasn't for us. Um, I have noticed if you mix it a little strong, you may have like a white film on the leaf of your plant, but that's not going to hurt it. Um, I use this backpack sprayer. I can usually keep me a good steady pace of going and I've got a fan tip nozzle. I'll show you. See how it sprays that wide? Hang on. Here, can you see it? Do it again. How it sprays yeah. that wide stream. That way I can get good coverage on the whole plant. Show this here, Maggie. I can I can cover that whole plant in one swat. That's all it takes right there. So I'll go down through here. Well now when you get out here to the where the watermelons are really spread, of course I kinda gotta wave it around. But see how quick I can do it? And having that fan tip nozzle on there not only saves me time, it actually saves my mix too because I can cover such a broad area with such an even pattern that I'm not standing out here going, you know, 
and and really wasting it i'm 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 getting my maximum coverage with the minimum amount of spray What you got over here? Oh, you found a tiny one. Oh, mama, there's look. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's so cute. So Indian corn, I think we figured out is partially cross-pollinated mm. corn is what the seeds are. So some of the stalks are purple. This one down yeah. here is kind of pink. Purple tasseling. Purple tasseling. Oh, that's cool. But it's like that. It's all mixed up wow. all the way down through the Indian corn. Some of it's green, some of it's purple. This one's half purple. So half we're guessing that's how it makes Indian corn. Hey, how many of y'all ever go to your garden and not remember Daddy, what you planted? Deer track. Where? I think that might be an old deer track. Yeah, but, it's uh, an old deer track. We don't know what this stuff is. We I know that it's either a squash or some type of pumpkin or something. It's I think. I think it's a squash. It may be. I thought we planted some straight neck squash up here somewhere, but I hadn't seen that nowhere. And I don't know if that's what this is or not. It really does look like squash. But this, it really don't look that great. But uh, we'll find out. Eventually. Eventually, I guess. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is I didn't even know what these long vining things were up here until it started having a butternut squash on it. And I was like, well, I guess that's where we planted the butternut. Okay. We really should do better at keeping up with it's stuff. It's bleeding, I guess it's a scab. But for the record, we did leave the labels like way up here stuck in the ground and they disintegrated because they were paper. That's on that's on me. I did that. <laughs> I have seen a few cobs. You did? Yeah. You want to go down here and show them how tall it is? Well, let's go. <laughs> so y'all right here we got a mysterious watermelon plant that we didn't plant here and i know it's not a seed left over from last year because last year this whole field was covered in brush there was no garden planted here only thing we can figure out is right after we planted these we had a really bad rain and it washed a washout down through here and maybe one of the seeds washed to here. We well, really I, don't know. Well, maybe it's a wild watermelon. <laughs> no, there's no wild watermelon. <laughs> but here we are at this corn. Um, this may actually be the stalk that I showed. Is it this one? Wow. This may be the stalk we showed in that previous video. And uh, the ears are, are head high to me, which is crazy. Um, but this is that Jimmy Red, like you grind for a uh, cornmeal. I think if you pick this when it's still in its tender stage, you can actually eat it. Um, you know, like that corn, you know, yeah. like you would eat sweet corn. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty excited. I've never grown any type of red it's corn like this. I'm pretty excited about it. But it just blows my mind at how tall it is. And this is not even the tallest. We got a lot more out in here. Look at there's one. Yeah, there's one there too. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Daddy! 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 Look, Mama, it's like an entrance! It's like a What? We have for this pretty wolf, for the wolf for the white corn. Oh, for they look at the white corn? Yeah. We're hurrying. Uh, so this is the white hickory king corn. This is also a corn used for uh, cornmeal. And I... Like I said, you could eat it young too. Megan, get a shot of that sky right there. That is crazy looking. That's beautiful. This stuff is a jungle. It hadn't even started putting ears on yet. And I mean, just just look. It's small. It surprised me for the weather conditions we've had. This corn has really surprised me at how good it's done. Yeah, it's big. This corn looks like right here's a good tall one. Daddy. Where? Oh, right that's here. good. So, oh. guys, get up here and look at this. The ears on this corn 
are going to be above my head. Am I going to be able to reach them? <laughs> I don't know. That, no. that worries me a little bit, though, because all that weight is going to be so high up on this stalk. It's going to make it fall down. Exactly. And when the wind comes, like this one looks up. like it's already trying to break out. So when the wind comes, like you know, gonna, and all that weight's up there, it, it's gonna, it's we, gonna may have, over. we may have problems on our hands. It's going up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Megan's going to have to reach up to pick that. So, y'all, we have... <laughs> We have a, a corn picker that you pull behind a tractor, <laughs> but we're going we're planning on pulling all of this by hand. I, um, I might have to bring my sit ladder. You may have to. <laughs> I can't even jump up there and get it. <laughs> for for two reasons we're planning on pulling it by hand because this field is tight. There's not enough room at the end of the field to, to turn the corn picker around. Uh -huh. And another <laughs> reason Maggie. Maggie. <laughs> but, Maggie. Another reason being is to, where this is going to be cornmeal. It's going to be ground into something we're going to eat. Any grease or anything that's in that corn picker may contaminate it. It might know, mess up our meal. I don't know that for sure. But that's just a thought that's in the back of my head. We're going to have a corn shucking. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll be the only ones at the corn shucking. And I'll be grinding because that's my favorite part about corn. So, so if you can see this corn right here being yellow, apparently it missed out on a little bit of fertilizer. Uh -huh. Corn's a very, very high feeder in your garden. And I think that's why most people fail with corn, especially new gardeners, is because they don't realize just how much, especially nitrogen, that corn takes. Um, it takes a ton of nitrogen. Other crops are doing fine in it, but those crops don't feed as heavy as corn. Corn's one of the main crops I really like to grow, so I want to make sure my land can grow corn. <laughs> Daddy. Without as much fertilizer. What? Um, well, why don't we show them how, what, the, what the different colors is? Oh, there, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, what... there you go. You're right. Yeah. Can you see there? How dark green. And how light green. Yep. How this got burnt? How this got burnt? Y'all, yeah, we'll go up here and show off the sunflowers real quick, and we're going to head back to the house for that other garden. We still got to pick the one across the creek before we go in tonight. Is it? Yep. Well, I think it's mad. Yeah. Oh, last night I gave one. Y'all, if, if you're hearing my kids talking about taking a bath tonight, it's their turn. They get a bath every night. I promise they're talking about whose turn is first. <laughs> Guys, look at this big one. That is a big one. I want to some. I want to you some, Mama. You do? Mm -hmm. You have to cut them with a knife. Oh, I thought you could break it off by hand. <laughs> but there, there's all of our sunflowers. We kind of planted those for the fun of it. The bees have really enjoyed them. You um, planted them for the bees. Yeah, and I guess you could say we planted them for the bees for sure. But uh, we were up here the other day. I don't see any on it now, which is getting late. But uh, the other day we were up here and they were covered Mama. in uh, bees. I guess the bees are in their house. Is that where they went? Yeah. I guess they're in their hive up in the tree somewhere. <laughs> I'm actually thinking that if we, I don't know for sure, but we may try to harvest every one of these sunflowers too and possibly use the seeds as part of our chicken feed. Don't know that for sure because I figure that'll be a job. But <laughs> that'd be something good for the kids to do, sit up there and scrape all those seeds off the sunflowers. <laughs>
All right, y'all. Buckle, you gonna sit right there. Mm -mm. Go hop out. I don't think that was quite big. These plants are huge. The yellow zucchini, that's what Jacob was just talking about, if you could hear him. Yeah. Look right here. Oh. Them, them right there are no good. Why? We'll throw them out. Why? Over here is, what are these that you planted? Crowder peas, ain't they? No, those are purple hole, purple hole pink eye cow peas. Where's that? Where's that? These things, I guess where it's so wet down here, they come up in what, three days? These things were planted on a Sunday morning and on Tuesday morning, they were busting through the ground. Maggie, watch them. There's, see the row of beans right there? Yeah. And then also Sunday morning, we, I come through and planted a row of Climbing Kentucky, let me think, make sure I get this name right. Kentucky Blue Wonder Green Beans. Well, why, why We're going to let them climb corn? up the popcorn because this popcorn won't be harvested till it's dry. So. Yeah, it won't be harvested till it's dry. So we're just going to let them hopefully run up the popcorn. The popcorn's already tall enough now that I don't think they'll strangle it out or anything. Like, how about this? How about this? Hey, Jacob, go get the bucket. So y'all remember me showing you the volunteer cucumber plants um, that came up from last year? We have not put any fertilizer or nothing at all. There's been nothing on these. Um, we haven't even taken care of them. They just came up by themselves. And they're putting off some beautiful cucumbers. Really pretty cucumbers. See there? Uh, probably picked 10 just now, just off of one plant. So, that's what I call free food. You didn't break the vine, did you? So, we're down here, like I said, picking garden. And I just wanted to show y'all. I see so many people that pick squash when it's all knotty and it's huge. I don't know the reasoning behind that, but when I pick it like that, it's nothing but seeds. When you pick squash, the way we like it anyway, which we do fried squash most of the time, something like that is almost perfect. You can go a little bigger than that, but I'm going to tell you, when they start getting all them knots all over them and start changing colors, they ain't fitting to eat in my eyes. In my opinion, the main thing, is, the, the the main thing is that's still that pale yellow color. Jacob, that one might be a little bit too little. That's all right. Well, I can still fry it. Just put it in the bucket. <laughs> but that pale yellow color, you don't want to see a dark, dark orange. So, y'all, we're about to head back to the house. And I guess we'll finally wrap this video up. It's probably got pretty lengthy by now. But this is what we do every evening. Megan was telling you earlier in that last video, she hadn't had any videos because we're just in the garden. Well, you're seeing right here what we do every single evening. But I wanted to show you something that I know a lot of people have done through the years, and this is the first time we've ever done it. So I had a terrible problem. <laughs> I had a terrible problem with cutworms cutting off my corn when it was coming up. Um, the plant would just get about this tall, and it was like you took a pair of scissors and cut it off at the base. So where all of that empty space is, we planted pumpkins. And uh, right here's one just coming up. We got a couple here just coming up. And, uh, Thank you. I've seen it done. I've never done it personally, but once the corn gets so tall, you know, it kind of shades out so you don't have no weed pressure. Thank you. And the pumpkins are going to run out and mingle in amongst the corn. And I'm kind of excited to see how just how well it works. Um, I've never done it. but I, And I hope it gets enough sunlight to, to work. Um, but... Hey, it's, it's some extra pumpkin what seeds we had. What are you, What are you doing? <laughs> Thank you. It's some, extra, it's some extra pumpkin seeds that we had. We're out nothing if it don't work. Um, but we'll know for next time. And it may help some of y'all too. If you don't have the room to plant a separate pumpkin patch or a separate corn patch or anything like that. And I know you can plant beans in with corn too, which is what we've done over here. But a lot of people actually do it when the corn's still small. 
Um, and we tried that one year, and we may actually broken. talk about that later, but we didn't have broken. that great of luck with it. But anyways, it's Your something mama. to do if uh, if you're limited on space. And I know a lot of people are. Um, we're going to have crowded peas growing out in our corn anyway, so before the season's over with, y'all will get to see what uh, bean-covered corn looks like because they're going to take it over. There's shoots running out everywhere. They're growing up the net, but they're still trying to get out in the corn, and I think it's going to be kind of impossible to avoid. And this variety of Crowder peas, we planted them last year for the first time, and they run everywhere. They are almost invasive, like they take over. So, but they produce, man. They just produce and produce and produce. What kind are these? I have no idea. I don't know the name of those. <laughs> no, I, I'll have to look back. I'll have to look back on the on the seed pack. I know they're sort of a, like a light colored bean. They're not one of the dark beans, and the and the hull is a white. It's, when it's ready to pick, it's a white hull, so it's not a purple hull bean. It's actually a white hull bean. But uh, as far as the variety goes, I have no idea. I guess we're going to be heading to the house. The kids are getting restless. It's almost well. It's probably past bedtime, but now for them. And uh, but y'all, this is just how it goes. You know, people say they don't have time. I think it's all in what you want to do, really. I mean, you know, some people choose to go to the lake on the weekends or go sit in front of the TV on, in the evenings when they get home from work. Look, I'd rather be, I'll take any day in the garden over that. Every time we go down to that garden, we come back with a five gallon bucket full. We've got squash and zucchini and cucumbers in there. Well, y'all, I hope y'all can hear my soothing background noise. Just listen. That's the sounds of hot summer nights here in North Carolina, and it is humid. I don't know if you can see the fog around my glasses, but it is so humid out here tonight. Um, but if you made it this far in the video, I know it was a long one. I do appreciate uh, when I'm talking to into talking in some of these videos. He's so knowledgeable about um, just all kinds of things, and um, I feel like he could teach y'all, you know, share his knowledge through my channel so I do I'm glad that he uh he decided to talk for me tonight and um teach y'all some things I hope and anyways um hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to y'all next time